Well, I wanted to talk about two of my favorite food plot planting seeds. And yeah, I talk about them a lot, rye and brassica. And, uh, and I want to kind of do a comparison between the two um, as far as which one you should plant, which one's more important, and most importantly, what happens when you mix them and why they should never be mixed. And what is a brassica? A lot of people ask that. Well, it's a radish, it's a rape, it's a turnip, it's a canola, it's a kale, mustard. That's all in the brassica family. And so that's a family just like clover. So people say, are you planting purple top turnips? Are you planting turnips um, or brassica? They might refer to as rape. You know, the common, which, which is good for the white-tail industry, is uh, uh, rape, turnip, and radish. And those are all in the same family. So we'll, I'll sometimes plant radish some, uh, separately. In fact, the mix that I have right now, I've enhanced uh, John's Northwoods Whitetail's Sweet Feast Brassica blend. I add a little bit more radish to it, and I, I'll cut it in half and then add seven, eight pounds of radish back to it to make up for that half per acre. And I like that because that radish has that soil building ability, plus deer like radishes more than purple top turnips. Uh, for example, purple top turnips is three pounds per acre. You should never have more than three quarters of a pound to a pound uh, per acre in the mix. Uh, dwarf Essex rape is about five pounds per acre. Um, if you are using Dwarf Essex rape, you shouldn't have more than a pound, half a pound at the most. Tillage radish is more 15 pounds per acre. So when you buy a commercial mix, a white tail mix, they've, they've done that math for you and figured that out. Uh, for example, 15 pounds per acre tillage radish, obviously 20% of an acre is three pounds per acre. So you have to do that math and add it all together, almost look at each one separately, add it up to an acre and that's how you plant. You shouldn't ever plant it with rye, and there's three reasons, and you could even say wheat, especially. Oats turn brown as the season progresses after they get a few frosts. Um, I use light oats as a cover crop. The reason for that is light oats won't compete with a lot of crops that I'm planting, and deer like oats when they're older as opposed to wheat or rye. They'll eat that seed head in December if it's sticking above the snow. But even then, I'm rarely, except for new fields, like here, this today, am I adding brassica and oats together even? And even if I do, it's light oats and it's tillage radish and it's on a new plot that I plan on starting a rotation next year using the ultimate no-till blend. We're using buckwheat as that planting uh, enhancement. So reasons you shouldn't plant them together, and this is very basic. This is something that I figured back out in probably 2000, 2001, planting a new plot mix everything we call it a kitchen sink blend and it's funny because people are using those kitchen sink blends now like they're the greatest thing on earth but boy we figured this out 20 years ago you don't do those things and part of it is you look at those stunted colored brassicas instead of that deep green and there's rye in there there might have been a little bit of wheat might have been oats and then that brassica blend <clears throat> and you're asking yourself how come this is colored how come it's purple red yellow starving for nutrients and i talked to my soil conservation district uh, manager Jim Islip up there, he's worked for the state of Michigan, uh, state of, uh, or Michigan State University, and then he headed the entire Upper Peninsula for ag. And so he had some great recommendations, but he looked at it and he just said, it's just nutrient starved. The rye is taking from the brassica. It's not allowing it to grow appreciably. And it all sounds good on paper. You put it all in this big kitchen sink blend, but rarely does that work. That's why we plant pure brassica on one side of the plot. If it fails, then six weeks later, five weeks later, we'll add 200 pounds of winter rye on it, but we're not planting them together. The rye has a natural weed suppressant and takes from the volume and attraction and nutrition of your brassica family plantings. And so you don't wanna plant those at the same time. That's only one reason as far as the timing goes. The next one is you shouldn't plant brassica more than two years in a row in the same plot. I prefer to do it one year at a time. So we're actually taking brassica on one half of this plot. We're taking our green blends on the other half, which this year we're gonna use a little buckwheat, tillage radish, peas, very light oats. And we want that candy crop. We want it to grow quickly because we're putting it on new soil. There's a lot of soil exposed right here. We're doing really well. We've practice great weed control. We talk about that easy no-till practice in, in this area, but you have to rotate. So if you're taking a small hunting plot like this and you're putting it all in brassica and you're mixing rye and you're using that kitchen sink blend, you have to rotate this within one to two years or you're gonna develop a root fung fungus and you're gonna take out your whole brassica crop. It's not gonna be anything appreciable and it takes a while to get that out of the soil and out of the ground. So we don't wanna do that. At the same time, we don't wanna put all brassica here 
and then on the next plot over, use all cereal grains and then go back and forth because then we're gonna have a nice redneck blind sitting here in this gray dogwood cluster. You can see right over here, we'll have that redneck blind sticking right above that. It's about 15 feet tall. We hope that redneck will stick out a foot or two at the most. It'll blend into the top of that bush. We access it through switchgrass, through this brush over here and get in. But if we have brassica here, grains over there, and the deer, fawn's running right now, but but if the deer are hitting Nebraska only, then we're wasting a stand location over there. And if they're hitting the cereal grains and they're over there and we have Nebraska here, then this entire plot in our redneck blind, or if we have one of Jack's family tradition, tripod stands over there or stand locations, a pop-up blind, whatever we have, we're wasting one food plot at, the, at a time and on small properties, even if it's several hundred acres. I'm not saying a several hundred acre property is small. What I'm saying is you still can't afford to waste spots and waste hunting spots because if this plot's not working, all the does come over here, they fight for each other. I wanna separate out these does. You separate out your bucks, you have a better hunt. So you have to rotate these within the same plot. That means you can't plant this entire thing in brassica and cereal grains and then do it every year because you can't plant brassica in the same spot. So we plant brassica on one side and we plant our green blend on the other. Now this first year when it's a new plot, we'll put tillage radish in the whole thing to improve the soil, lift the soil, build the soil, put nitrogen back in. And then next year we'll go back to our complete ultimate no-till on here where we plant buckwheat during the summertime. And then we have the greens on one side and then we have the brassica on the other. And we can start that rotation where every year we're flipping it around. And so you have to rotate them anyways. When you add in the fact that the rye is taking from the brassica and as a natural weed suppressant, it's basically killing it as it's growing and stunting the growth. It's a waste to put the brassica seed in, in the first place. When you add in the fact that you have to rotate, then those are two great reasons never to mix. But the third one is the real kicker. You need to plant brassicas around the August 1st. We're planting here the end of July because it looks like there's some immediate rain in the forecast over the next week. Tomorrow, Wednesday, Tuesday, tomorrow, Wednesday, uh, both days, and then this Saturday looks like rain, and then next week it looks like rain. So we have good rain in the forecast. I'm taking a chance of putting the seed down it'll last for a couple weeks. As long as we get some seed here or some rain here over the next couple weeks, uh, we'll be okay. Brass brassicas should be planted now. If we planted rye right now or wheat, it gets too stemmy, dormant and old, and the deer don't like it. So why would I want to plant something in my plot that's five, six weeks early, even four weeks early from when it should optimally be planted for volume and attraction and nutrition for deer? You have to separate them. So you're separating because the rye takes from Nebraska, you're separating them because the timing is different and you're separating because you have to rotate the plot anyways from one side to the other. So it's three great reasons. You know, in the end, we'll be able to create this food plot, have that balance back and forth. We had tillage radish in the brassica side. We had heavy rye. We filled, we top dress our greens later in September because again, we shouldn't be putting rye out right now anyways. It smother everything, it take from everything, but it's a great enhancement and fail safe when it gets into early September and it adds green all the way until the springtime. So in the end, which one's better for you to plant? It depends on your conditions. There's areas up north with small food plots. I would never recommend brassica plots because the deer are going to eat it down to the dirt before the season even begins. There's areas in giant ag that has beans and corn and lots of food all around where brassica might not be a great fit either. Maybe more oats, maybe more late planted peas, beans. Every condition's different. People ask, what should I plant on my property? I have this. Well, tell me about your neighbors. Tell me about your deer herd. Tell me about your soil, your planting conditions, your planting resources, how, many, how much money do you have to spend, how many deer are in the area, how big are your food plots, what's your access, what's the size of your land. There's so many things to consider. What region are you in? Are you in a big woods area? Are you in an ag area? This takes hours of discussion, a couple hours every client that I visit, you know, over 100 a year, over 1,100 in total since 2005. That's a couple hours out of every client visit that we're talking food plots and food plot strategy. What have you done? What has worked? What hasn't? What are your neighbors doing? And it helps deliver an accurate prescription for success. But bottom line, when it comes to rye and brassica, I love them both. Rye wins when it comes to taking from brassica. But bottom line is they're both exceptional crops that you have to plant separately. Be very wary. There's a lot of kitchen sink blend mixes out there. And people will say, well, they like the oats when they're young, they eat those out and then Nebraska grows. You know, that might have happened in one out of a hundred properties, maybe a very specific property, but that usually is not the case. 
Same with rye. They like rye when it's young in September, not rye when it's young in August. There's a big difference. Folks, bottom line, you can't mix the two. Be very wary of mixes that you see. It discredits the entire seed company when you see that there's wheat, rye, rye grass mixed with rape, turnips, or radish, even kale, canola. It's all in the brassica crop. Yeah, there's a lot of really cool looking things on paper out there, but for a lot of us, our old, old timer food plots, I've only been doing it for 26, 27 years at this point, since the mid 90s. So I can maybe call myself an old timer to some extent. There's some of you have been out there that's been doing it 40, 50 years. But for us with experience, we figured this out decades ago. You don't mix those two. I urge you not to mix them for the success year, not only your food plots this year, but your hunting and your herd building ability. And frankly, just wasting your money as a lot of these hunting companies try to suck out of you, suck out of your hard earned dollars for this fall. I'm excited to tell you guys about my latest web class. It's how to plant food plots, how to design your food plot program. And it covers everything. And really there's 30 videos, over 10 hours, 11 hours of footage, workbook hats, you know, all that stuff on top of it. I urge you to check out the link, but I cover five main areas, critical food plot concepts, where to plant, how to create, what to plant, and finally how to plant it takes you through that step by step so you can make your own decisions that apply to you and build a great high quality food plot program this year, whether you have decades of experience or no experience at all.